morning, everyone, and welcome to our second 11.30 outdoor service. It's getting hotter and hotter, right? <laughs> we have a few announcements and then a few logistics before we start our service. And I'll do the announcements. I think that's the easier part. <laughs> so next Saturday, October 3rd, we'll have our monthly food drive. You can drive up with the car here in the parking lot, bring canned food, bring diapers, school supplies, art supplies, and grocery paper bags. And there will be a team that will take it out of your trunk so you don't have, have to get out of your car even. That's 10 to noon next Saturday. On Sunday, we will have this outdoor worship again, and there will be a slight change in, uh, in how we're doing, not the service, but the sign up. There will be a new form and we ask you that have signed up throughout October to sign up again because we'll have a weekly form now. That's easier for us to coordinate and um, yeah, it just gives us a better overview about who is coming and probably it's for you, it's a better reminder if you sign up from week to week. Um, so watch out for a link in a form that will come throughout the week. And next uh, Sunday also is uh, St. Francis Day. October 4th is St. Francis Day, and we will have our annual blessing of the animals. So if you have a pet, be it a guinea pig, a turtle, or, or your dog, bring it to the service, and we'll bless it here. And uh, there will also be a check form, a checkbox in the form when you sign up that will give us an overview about how many people will bring a pet. Um, so there are 50 seats available for next Sunday. We'll, we'll up the number to 50 um, participants for the services. And um, the earlier you sign up, the, the safer it is for you to have a seat. <laughs> All right, I think that was me. Good morning. Good to see you all here today. I just want to go over the logistics again. Um, you might have noticed some subtle markings on the uh, courtyard here. And so we're trying to get in the habit of understanding that you're sitting in a row. And I realize there's a lot of space between people. But when we get to the distribution of communion, we would ask that you go down your row and then up this way. The first row will just make a little loop here. And the next rows will come up here and go out and then back down this way. I will be standing over there to invite you as to when your row is coming. Pastor Frederica will be over here at this end to make sure you know how to get back. The idea is that you will be taking communion in your seat. You will come forward to get your elements and go back to your seat and wait until we are all back. And then I will say the words, or actually Pastor Frederica will be the one saying the words, and then um, we will take communion together at our seats, but you'll come forward to get it. For those of you for whom the cups are new, it's a wafer and the grape juice all in one thing. The first peel off is super thin. You could miss it. It's like saran wrap. It's clear. And that exposes the wafer. And then the big pull tab is kind of a foil uh, pull tab. And that exposes the grape juice. So I think that's it in the way of announcements. Gluten-free? Ah, yes. And we do have gluten-free. So if you need gluten-free, instead of taking a cup from one of the trays, you'll take a bag from the basket. So that's how that will work. Please stand as you are able. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also, and also with you. you. Let us pray. God of love, giver of life, you know our frailties and failings. Give us your grace to overcome them, keep us from those things that harm us, and guide us in the way of salvation. For Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. A reading from Ezekiel. The word of the Lord came to me. What do you mean by repeating this proverb concerning the land of Israel? 
The parents have eaten sour grapes, and the children's teeth are set on edge. As I live, says the Lord God, this proverb shall no more be used by you in Israel. Know that all lives are mine. The life of the parent as well as the life of the child is mine. It is only the person who sins that shall die. Yet you say, the way of the Lord is unfair. Hear now, O house of Israel, is my way unfair? Is it not your ways that are unfair? When the righteous turn away from their righteousness and commit iniquity, they shall die for it. For the iniquity that they have committed, they shall die. Again, when the wicked turn away from the wickedness they have committed and do what is lawful and right, they shall save their life. Because they considered and turned away from all the transgressions that they had committed, they shall surely live. They shall not die. Yet the house of Israel says, the way of the Lord is unfair. O house of Israel, are my ways unfair? Is it not your ways that are unfair? Therefore I will judge you, O house of Israel, all of you according to your ways, says the Lord God. Repent and turn away from all your transgressions, otherwise iniquity will be your ruin. Cast away from you all the transgressions that you have committed against me, and get yourselves a new heart and a new spirit. Why will you die, O house of Israel? For I have no pleasure in the death of anyone, says the Lord God. Turn then and live. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. To you, O Lord, I lift up my soul. My God, I put my trust in you. Let me not be put to shame, nor let my enemies triumph over me. Let none who look to you be put to shame. Rather, let those be put to shame who are treacherous. Show me your ways, O Lord, and teach me your paths. Lead me in your truth and teach me, for you are the God of my salvation. In you have I trusted all the day long. Remember, Remember O Lord, Lord, your compassion, compassion and love, for they are from everlasting. Remember not the sins of my youth and my transgressions. Remember me according to your steadfast love, and for the sake of your goodness, O Lord. You are gracious and upright, O Lord. Therefore you teach sinners in your way. You lead the lowly in justice, and teach the lowly your way. Please stand as you are able for the reading of the gospel. The Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory, Glory to you, you, O Lord. When Jesus entered the temple, the chief priests and the elders of the people came to him as he was teaching and said, by what authority are you doing these things? And who gave you this authority? Jesus said to them, I will also ask you one question. If you tell me the answer, then I will also tell you by what authority I do these things. Did the baptism of John come from heaven or was it of human origin? And they argued with one another. If we say from heaven, he will say to us, why then did you not believe him? But if we say of human origin, we are afraid of the crowd for all regard John as a prophet. So they answered Jesus, we do not know. And he said to them, neither will I tell you by what authority I am doing these things. What do you think? A man had two sons. He went to the first and said, son, go and work in the vineyard today. He answered, I will not. But later he changed his mind and went. The father went to the second and said the same. And he answered, I go, sir. But he did not go. Which of the two did the will of his father? They said, the first. Jesus said to them, truly I tell you, the tax collectors and the prostitutes are going into the kingdom of God ahead of you. For John came to you in the way of righteousness, and you did not believe him. But the tax collectors and the prostitutes believed him. And even after you saw it, you did not change your minds and believe him. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, O Christ. Christ. You may be seated. So another familiar story 
but I want to start with a, a couple of thoughts. One is the one of my favorite sayings from Alexandria, Minnesota, as I learned new uh, folk wisdom from a part of the country that I hadn't lived in previously. And there was a great phrase that this woman in our congregation used. She said it was from her father. The fair is in August and has nothing to do with what we're talking about. <laughs> what is fair, right? Last Sunday's gospel reading and even today's text, particularly from Ezekiel, we have the sense that God is gracious to people that we would not necessarily be inclined to be gracious to. And then we say, it's not fair because I've been good, they've been bad, why are you being gracious to them? Now, when we start to put this on top of the gospel text, it's important to understand where the gospel text is happening in the story of Jesus. We are now, although we're in the wrong time of the year, starting to approach Holy Week. The sequence of events that happened just before this encounter in the gospels is the Palm Sunday processional story. The story of Jesus on the back of an animal riding in through the eastern gates of the city of Jerusalem, getting ready to go into the city and meeting crowds of fans and adoring people. But it's important that we remember this story how it was, which if for you, perhaps like me, my Sunday school image of it was a little different. In my Sunday school image, Jesus always had a clean robe to wear every day. And he came into the city and just, it was like a rock star showing up to a concert, right? People cheering, you know, you can picture they've got their phones out taking pictures. You can picture that kind of a scenario, right? That's, it's not exactly quite like how it happened. When Jesus came in, everybody started shouting and calling out to him, Hosanna, 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 which in my Sunday school mind obviously means hooray, right? I mean, that's what you shout when the rock star comes in, except that's, that's not what Hosanna means. Hosanna means save us, save us. Well, suddenly the tone of this march and procession feels a little bit different. People are starting to pack into Jerusalem to observe the Passover. Jesus is coming in and hordes and hordes of desperate people come pouring out to see him, knowing who he is and calling out that they might be saved. Now this wasn't some tent revival kind of scenario where they were hoping that their soul might be good in heaven. These are things about having enough to eat, worried about family who are sick. Save us meant in a tangible, real sort of way. Now likely, at a time similar to this, there would have been another procession coming up from the old port at Jaffa, coming up to Jerusalem from the west, those likely headed by someone also riding an animal, Roman troops being brought in for Passover to make sure that a lid was kept on things, to make sure that the whole place didn't blow up because there was some charismatic country preacher in town perhaps. So where does Jesus go? Now, when I'm in Sunday school, Jesus then immediately starts to get ready to celebrate the Passover. And you can kind of picture him in the kitchen working, right? And he's getting ready and doing all kinds of things to get ready to observe this with his disciples. That's, that's not how it happened. So he comes in with this horde of people yelling to save us and they storm the temple complex. They occupy it. They go to the banking area. Many historical economists feel that maybe a third or more of the economy of Jerusalem took place in the temple, changing your Roman money to Hebrew money, 
purchasing animals so that you might offer them for sacrifice. This was a big deal. This would be like going to a big bank anywhere in a big city, right? And what does Jesus do? He doesn't take out his ATM card and say, we're going to need some cash for the Passover dinner. He starts throwing over the tables, throwing the money everywhere, makes a whip and starts driving out the people running the money tables. Now, if you could imagine that at the Wells Fargo in Midtown, people will start to get excited, right? And the temple actually has their own police. But Jesus had so many people with him that they stepped back. He was overwhelming them. So why does that week in the story come to a conclusion at his crucifixion outside of the city by the Roman authorities? Because he was dangerous. Because he was upsetting the apple cart. Because he was driving a spike into the economy and into the temple complex. And so that's the scenario that we have when Jesus is approached by the temple authorities who have the police with them, right? And they're kind of coming up kind of timidly. Sir, <laughs> we have a question for you. <laughs> who are you? Why are you doing these things? Who gave you permission or authority to do this? And Jesus gets into a little bit of a rhetorical discussion with them about who has authority to do this, that, or the other. And then we get to a parable. Now, the parables are dangerous for a number of reasons, one of which is that they are invariably telling a story that the hearers, or at least some of them, won't like. And so in the story today, there are two characters that represent groups of listeners there. The temple authorities and those newer to the faith who would have been seen as unsavory by the temple authorities. So let's go through the parable. There is a father who has a vineyard and he calls one of his sons and says, I need you to go work in the vineyard. And the son says... I will not, leaves, but later, in fact, does work in the vineyard. The father asks the other son, I need you to go out in the vineyard and work. And the son says, I go, sir, but then does not go. So which of those sons do you want? <laughs> Right? Which of those sons do you want? So he asked the crowd, well, which did the will of the father? Well, ultimately the one who worked in the vineyard, but the one who seemed obstinate initially. So Jesus says, my followers, the riffraff, those that you denied, those that you don't think of very highly, the ones that you think are outside of God's grace and mercy, those are the ones to do God's favor. And who are the ones who do not? Who seem at initial glance to be the ones who are doing the right thing? All of the upright temple authorities who are in the end not actually doing God's work. So you can imagine this story probably didn't go over very well. But I want to talk about two other pieces. Do you notice how there's not really a good guy or a bad guy in this story? It's kind of a mess of human beings, isn't it? There seem to be two children who are missing. So maybe these are the two daughters, perhaps, because we have the two sons. The father asks the first daughter, go in the vineyard and work for me. And the daughter says, I go, sir, and goes. And then the other one is invited to work in the vineyard. And that daughter says, I will not, and does not. Do you notice how those are the two children we're missing? But they're the children we like, aren't they? We like children in these stories, or people in society, 
characters in movies, politicians we like or hate, neighbors, everyone who are either the I will not and does not or I will and does, the good and the bad. Because then we know what it's going to be, right? The bad people are going to do bad things and they're just bad. Whereas the good people will always do good things because they're good people. I feel like we're in a moment in time where we are being stretched to the wider limits, where there are gooder good people and badder bad people. And the badder the bad people are, the worse things that can be done and justified because they're really, really bad people. And the good people are perfect and never need to have their motives or actions questioned, right? During this season, it seems very important for us to remember that one of the things that we do as Christians is regularly take time to acknowledge that we are broken, that we make mistakes, that we are not better than our neighbor, that we are called to humbly, as the text for today says, assume that the other is better than we are. To understand that when we see people who are hurting, who act out wrongly, who are not doing God's work in the vineyard, we are called to remember and to recognize that on some days, that may be us. And so I think the challenge for us in these days, as we hear this text, is to remember those children aren't in the story. And that all of us land in this messy middle where we call on one another, even in our own brokenness, to return to the vineyard to do God's work, recognizing that we ourselves don't do it perfectly either. So as you go through your week and we have your steady diet of social media and all kinds of news, be mindful that we are all broken, but that in God's mercy, we are all granted grace. Amen. Drawn together in the compassion of God, we pray for the church, the world, and all those in need. O oh God, in all the world, give your church unity. Inspire all the baptized with the mind of Christ. 
where the church is powerful and where it struggles. Shape us with humility and obedience so that your love may be at work in us. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. O oh God, preserve and keep your creation. Mend and redeem places that are polluted and damaged so that all of creation confesses you as Lord. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. O oh God, turn the nations toward life. Where our ways are unfair, give us new hearts and new spirits. Where sin permeates our cultures and institutions, change our minds and teach us to trust your authority. Lord, in your mercy, hear yeah. our prayer. O oh God, our lives are yours. Relieve the suffering of those who are ill in body, mind, or spirit. Defend the lives and welfare of children who are abused or neglected, hungry or exploited, bullied or lonely. Be with all those we name in our hearts or out loud now. Lord, in your mercy, yeah. hear our prayer. O oh God, turn this congregation away from our own interests toward the interests of others. Fill us with your compassion and sympathy. Bless ministries of care in our community, like Ecumenical Hunger Program, South Palo Alto Food Closet, and Habitat for Humanity. Make us into signs of your mercy and justice for our neighbors. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Oh God, thank you for those who have gone into the kingdom ahead of us, tax collectors and prostitutes, likely and unlikely, obedient and slow to learn. By their witness, teach us to confess Jesus Christ as Lord in life and in death. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. All these things, and whatever else you see that we need, we entrust to your mercy. Amen. 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 The peace of Christ be with you always. And also, also with, with you. you. Let's take a moment and share that peace with the persons next to you, and in a socially distanced manner with peace. everyone else. Peace, peace, be peace be with you. Which means don't move from your chair. <laughs> Unless Thanks you're in the, the same family. Peace. <laughs> Godspeed. Peace. God's peace. peace. <laughs> the Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord, our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior, Jesus Christ, who on this day overcame death and the grave, and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. And so with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Communing God. Make your joy complete by uniting those who share this meal with the same mind that was in Christ Jesus. As we remember his saving mercies, make us to be this, of the same love, the same heart, sharing in the same spirit. And sanctify this bread and this cup, that they may be for us the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, gave thanks and broke it, and gave it to all his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. 
Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. God of every consolation, bring your kingdom among your children who are bowed low, bowed low under the weight of oppression. Empty your church of all that obscures its witness to the cross of Christ. Make us ready for the one day when we shall kneel around your throne, together with prophets, apostles, and martyrs, in the company of Jesus our Lord, giving our praise and glory to you, God our Father, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your, your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial, and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated for now, and then come forward as we are called you row by row.
I invite you to stand. Now, if you peer back the very first layer, that's a very thin one. The body of Christ given for you. Blood of Christ shed for you. God of abundance, with this bread of life and cup of salvation, you have united us with Christ, making us one with all your people. Now send us forth in the power of your spirit, that we may proclaim your redeeming love to the world and continue forever in the risen life of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord, the Lord has shine on you with grace and mercy. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Amen. Go in peace. Christ is with you. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. You can put the cups in the gray trash can by the bulletin table. Your bulletins can go in the blue one. And we just ask that you continue to maintain space as you leave and head back to your car.